Okay, so you saw the thumbnail and clicked, meaning I piqued your interest. I hope you're willing to hear me out because I admit, this one may be a bit of a wild one, but I think it's a really interesting theory. So let's get started on how Ruby's eyes will be used to save Salem from a grim half. Now that it's become clear that Volume 9 will be taking place outside of Remnant, that opens up so many possibilities. Our cast has the opportunity to learn and experience things no one in Remnant has ever experienced before, and gain something from it, whether it be wisdom, internal power, or some other third thing. But one thing I think might arise from this little trip is our cast figuring out an actual plan to deal with Salem, since, you know, that hasn't popped up in Remnant for the many decades Ozma has been trying to find it. But at the same time, the answer has to lie with our MC Ruby, because it'd be pretty weird if it didn't. Okay, so what does Ruby have? Silver eyes. What can they do? Vaporize smaller grim and petrify bigger ones. As for other functionality, we haven't seen any. No, wait, that's not entirely true. Silver eyes are also capable of severely damaging grim human hybrids, attacking the grim parts. For example, what happened with the Hound, or Cinder. Although it does seem that the human parts take damage in this regard as well. Case in point, Cinder lost her eye and temporarily lost her voice, not to mention being in a severely weakened state. I think it's for this reason that Salem had her henchmen hunt down silver-eyed warriors, being a fusion between Grim and human herself. You can't tell me that Ospin never thought to send a silver-eyed warrior after Salem to try and vaporize her or maybe at least trap her in a layer of stone. But clearly, that must not have been effective enough. The key word, however, being enough. Since her henchmen hunt down silver-eyed warriors. I mean, if the silver eyes had no effect, she wouldn't bother with them, right? She must have fought one at some point and realized how much of a pain it was for her to deal with them. Then, seeking to snuff out any hope of defeating her, Salem started making them pets, giving them a face worse than, yeah, fate worse than death as like a fudgy to Ospin. I think a major reason why no one has managed to defeat Salem with Silver Eyes alone is because the power only manifests in quick large bursts, even when Maria, a seasoned warrior, used them. So, even if you were to vaporize Salem, she'd just come back later and the warrior would be drained. Therefore, from the information that Silver Eyed warriors were hunted, but Salem is still alive and well, we can deduce that we can probably knock Salem down but we can't keep her down. Where do we go from here? Let's try looking at this problem from another angle. The issue isn't necessarily Salem's existence, but the fact that she's trying to destroy the world. Now, a lot of people were quick to point out that Ozma asked the wrong question, saying he should have asked how to defeat Salem, not kill, or at least seal Salem away. But if you ask me, the correct question would be, how do I stop Salem from trying to destroy the world? And my answer would be, get rid of the part of her that craves destruction. Her grim part. You may be asking if that's even possible, but let's think about what Salem actually is. Salem is an immortal human who has been fused with the essence of Grim. By the logic that she's immortal, she can't permanently lose or replace any human part of herself, she should always be able to regenerate any missing human bits. Even if you were to remove her heart, or brain, or even drain all of her blood, she should be able to get that stuff back. But wait, the Grim Pool isn't a part of her. I see it as more like if you had a knife lodged in your stomach. You can't heal until you remove the knife, so theoretically, if you could break her down into her most basic parts and separate them, wouldn't her human parts still be capable of regeneration? The issue is getting her to regenerate without the grim essence getting added into the mixture. This is where Ruby comes in. I believe while being in another realm, Ruby will learn how to activate her silver eyes in a focused beam for an extended period of time, as a way of keeping Salem disintegrated. Okay, so we can keep Salem down for a little bit, but how do we get just her human half to regenerate? <laughs> I have a secret card up my sleeve. Wanna guess what it is? I'll give you a hint. If only we had a way for humans to heal using something only humans have, or any creature with a soul. And if only we had someone capable of boosting this thing to an insane level after going through an evolution of some kind. 
If only Jean. It's Jean. I bet some of you knew beforehand that Team Ruby would fall into the abyss as soon as it was mentioned. Or, like me, you didn't pay enough attention to the opening visuals because you were distracted by that awesome theme song. Some roses will never bloom! When Neo fell, we were probably like, eh, she was with Ruby, so it couldn't be helped. But when Jean also fell, you were probably caught off guard thinking, really? Jean as well? Why? Unless he was shipping Jean and Neo, then maybe he saw it coming. But I'm here to tell you this. This is why. And maybe the ship thing. Ever since we discovered Jean's semblance, he seems to be deeply involved whenever something big goes down. Like Penny's most recent death. I can't be the only one who believes that the writers are planning something big for him. I'd say he's almost as much of a main character as the members of Team Ruby themselves. At least more of a main character than Team Juniper. Please tell me I'm not the only one who sees this. I think this is where it all pays off, with Jean's evolved semblance being capable of helping Salem's human half regenerate faster by boosting her aura, while the grim half is constantly being destroyed by Ruby's silver eyes, thus healing Salem. Now, I don't think that Salem will just change her ways, but I do think in this state she'll be more open to reason, and that's where Ozpin comes in. Salem and Ozma can finally have their chat about what happened to their kids and marriage. I assume losing those things is what set her off, because remember, before Ozma found Salem again, she was just hiding in the woods, despite being a creature with the desire for pure destruction. It was only after their fight that Salem set out on this path to destroy the world. Although they're going to have to kiss and make up without kissing because it's Oscar's body and that would be weird and please don't do that. But here's the part that makes this theory fascinating. Or stupid, you're entitled to your own opinion. The Silver Eyes only work off a desire to protect, not destroy. Meaning that Ruby will need to have a desire to save Salem. Which means that in order for this plan to work, Ruby has to forgive Salem. Like I said, fascinating or stupid depending on your viewpoint. I personally think it's fascinating. This could be a lesson the group learns while in this other realm. That sometimes forgiveness for your enemies is necessary for the sake of the bigger picture. Looking at you, Neo. So that's the theory. Ruby learns how to use her silver eyes in a way that allows her and Jean to rip the grim of Salem like a symbiote, healing her back to her human form, calming her down enough to talk with Ozpin about not destroying the world. And then maybe her grim half turns into its own monster. I've seen some pictures online that look pretty cool as a design. And then Cinder becomes the main villain because we all know she has her own agenda. And then the team fights Cinder. And then, and then, okay, I'm going off the rails here. Ah, but thanks for listening this far. I really appreciate it. It's nice to feel like someone wants to hear what you have to say. <laughs> as crazy as what I have to say gets. If you got any theories or opinions you'd like to share about Ruby, feel free in the comments section. If you were confused when I mentioned semblance evolution, I made a video outlining that theory you can check out if you want to. I'd appreciate it. But only if you want to. Wouldn't want you to sit through my ramblings when you're not interested. Oh gosh, I'm rambling right now, aren't I? Uh, well, thanks. And remember to keep it smooth.